welcome to South Asia today, a show that provides you the glimpses of South Asia. I'm your host, Shivangi Mishra. Let's begin with the headlines first. Indian PM Modi wins third term in Lok Sabha elections. Sri Lanka closes schools as rain kills nearly 30 people. And historic Neem Rana Fort transforms into premier resort destination. Let's begin the show. The Bharatiya Janta Party led National Democratic Alliance's overwhelming success in the Lok Sabha elections marked a historic moment, enabling Prime Minister Narendra Modi to secure a third straighter. This victory underscored the steadfast support for PM Modi's leadership. PM Modi conveyed deep gratitude to the citizens for their mandate and expressed appreciation to the Election Commission for its efforts. With global leaders sending warm regards and congratulations, there is a tangible sense of optimism about the future of India's international relations. We have this report. The National Democratic Alliance Coalition, led by the Bharti Janta Party, emerged victorious in the Indian elections, creating a historic opportunity for Prime Minister Narendra Modi to take office for a third straight term. This victory confirmed the nation's steadfast support for Prime Minister Modi's leadership. PM Modi thanked the people profusely in his first speech after the election results for once again giving his alliance their mandate. Bharat Mata Ki Bharat Mata Ki Bharat Mata Ki Jai Jagannath Jai Jagannath Aapka Yesne Aapka Ye Pyaar इस आशीर्वाद के लिए मैं सभी देशवासियों का रणी हूं आज बड़ा मंगल है और इस पावन दिन एनडीए की लगातार तीसरी बार सरकार बननी तय है। In his speech, Prime Minister Modi expressed his appreciation to the Election Commission for organizing the comprehensive election campaign and emphasized how proud Indians are of the legitimacy of the democratic process. PM Modi said. People had placed their faith in the BJP-led coalition for a third time and it was historic in his first comments since counting of votes began. Furthermore, he declared that Indians will work together to guide the nation towards progress and he foresees a new phase of important choices during his third term. <laughs> जनता जनार्दन के बहुत आभारी हैं देशवासियों ने भाजपा पर एनडीए पर पूर्ण विश्वास जताया है फॉलोइंग प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी इज डिसाइसिव री इलेक्शन Global leaders extended their heartfelt congratulations, fostering a renewed spirit of cooperation and friendship. From Italy to Bhutan, and even amid diplomatic tensions with the Maldives, there was a widespread expression of goodwill and optimism about the future of India's relations with these countries. Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Meloni congratulated PM Modi and emphasized their commitment to strengthening Italy-India ties, while Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu offered warm congratulations on Modi's third consecutive victory 
expressing hope for the continued growth of India-Israel relations. Bhutan's Prime Minister Sherin Topke also tweeted his congratulations, expressing eagerness to enhance bilateral relations and commending Modi's efforts to elevate India's global standing. Additionally, Nepal's Prime Minister Pushpakamal Dehil Prachanda congratulated PM Modi on securing a third consecutive term. Despite ongoing diplomatic tensions, Mohammad Moizu, President of the Maldives, expressed optimism about cooperating with India to pursue common interests and achieve stability and prosperity for both nations. The widespread congratulatory messages from global leaders reflect a renewed era of collaboration and friendship. The recent heavy monsoon rains in Sri Lanka have resulted in significant loss of life and widespread disruption. At least 30 people have been killed and five reported missing as landslides and flash floods have hit the country. 13 of the 25 districts experienced flooding, with five on major flood alert due to alarming river levels. Electricity supplies have been cut off in several areas and schools have been shut as more rain is forecast. The Disaster Management Agency is coordinating relief efforts amidst ongoing severe weather conditions. The recent heavy monsoon rains in Sri Lanka have resulted in significant loss of life and widespread disruption across the country. At least 30 people have been killed and several reportedly missing after heavy monsoon rains lashed Sri Lanka, causing landslides and flash floods this week. According to Sri Lanka's Disaster Management Agency, 13 of the island nation's 25 districts were hit by floods, while five were placed on major flood alert as water levels in a number of rivers reached alarming levels. Supplies of electricity have been cut off in several areas and schools ordered to remain shut after the weekend holiday as more rain was forecast. We've been preparing uh, prepared clean hygienic meals uh, for uh, almost 1,500 to 1,800 individuals and we've been distributing it through boats uh, without any uh, differentiation. Anybody who has a need has, uh, has received a, a hot meal. More than 40,000 people were affected nationwide and heavy downpours which uprooted trees, downed power lines and cut electricity for tens of thousands of people. The Disaster Management Centre, DMC, said that the fatalities were reported from seven districts including the capital Colombo where torrential rain exceeding 300 mm triggered flash floods, uprooted trees, unleashed strong winds and lightning and caused landslides. The highest amount of rainfall was recorded at 480 mm in central Sri Lanka, according to the country's meteorological department. The <laughs> As the monsoon rains are expected to persist, the situation remains precarious, with more rainfall anticipated in the coming days. The impact on over 40,000 people nationwide underscores the urgent need for continued vigilance and support to mitigate further damage and aid recovery efforts. Now we take a look at some happenings in Asia in a segment called Asia Watch. Officials from Japan's Transport Ministry launched an on-site investigation at Toyota Motors headquarters 
after irregularities were found in its applications to certify certain models. The widening fallout over vehicle certification tests stem from a safety test scandal at Toyota's Daihatsu compact car unit and has spread to other Japanese automakers. But Toyota, which has long prided itself on its reputation for safety and reliability, was the only automaker to undergo an on-site inspection. Japan's transport ministry had announced plans to carry out the inspection a day earlier when it said Toyota, Mazda, Honda, Suzuki and Yamaha Motor were found to have submitted either flawed or manipulated data when applying for certification of vehicles. Toyota's shares were down 1.1%, extending June 3, 1.8% loss. Toyota said on Monday they had halted shipments of some models. They were just six fluff balls each weighing around one kilogram at birth. Now at five months old, the playful white lion cubs are stealing the hearts of visitors at a zoo in Pakistan. Born to white African lioness Arya and white lion Drago on December 24 last year, the all-male sex triplets represent South Asia's largest litter, according to Danzu, a zoo in northeast Karachi, where they reside. The zoo placed the newborn cubs under specialized care for about three months before finally allowing visitors in April. The higher the litter count, the greatest the nutritional deficiency. It is very necessary that the cubs are covered in terms of multivitamins and other things, said veterinarian Misam Mehdi. Under the watchful eye of veterinary staff in the zoo, where they were first given supplements and milk before their current diet of chicken and beef, the cubs now each weigh around a healthy 12 kg. Though the cubs have yet to be named, the zoo has launched a naming contest on their Facebook page, inviting visitors to submit their suggestions. Mounted officers and a water cannon were used by Israeli police to disperse protesters in Tel Aviv after they took to the streets in protest of their government and its handling of the war in Gaza. Regular protests are held in Tel Aviv squares, one against the Israeli government, the other calling for the release of hostages held in Gaza, after which protesters from both gatherings march, joining together to block roads in the city. This week, tension rose after Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's office said, that any notion that Israel would agree a permanent ceasefire before the destruction of Hamas military and governing capabilities was a non-starter as a response to ceasefire and hostage release deal outlined by US President Joe Biden. Seven months into Israel's air and ground assault on Gaza following the bloody Hamas attack in southern Israel, Gazan health authorities have said more than 36,000 Palestinians have been killed and thousands more bodies are feared buried under rubble. The local residents and leaders of Awami Action Committee are frustrated against the poor road infrastructure in Gilgit, Baltistan. They blame Pakistan government and local administration for not providing even the basic amenities to the people of Gilgit, Baltistan. The poor condition of roads has led to many accidents in Gilgit, particularly in the Khanbari area. Deeply concerned to the public issues, a leader of Awami Action Committee has pledged to hold a Chakka Jam strike if the matter is not resolved soon. We have a report. Residents of Pakistan-occupied Gilgit-Baltistan are deeply frustrated with the deteriorating infrastructure and poor road conditions in the region. They voiced their anger against the administration for failing to provide even basic amenities to the people. Several leaders and activists from the Awami Action Committee have protested against the poor road infrastructure, highlighting numerous instances of administrative neglect.
हमारे रोड का कोई नाम और निशान ही नहीं है दरिया ने बहाकर रोड को लग गया आवाम के लिए बहुत सारे कन्वरी के आवाम के लिए बहुत सारे मुश्किल हैं और पैदल भी बड़ी मुश्किल से एक बोरी का वहाँ पर जो जो वहाँ से ले जाना घर तक पहुँचाने के लिए कन्वरी तक पहुँचाने के लिए एक हज़ार रुपये का खराजा थे एक बोरी के ऊपर अभी वजीर अल साहब की तरफ से कोई इंक्वायरी टीम भी मुकर की गई थी उन्हें खाली सैर व सफाटे करके वापस आए हैं मैं उनको तनबी करना चाहता हूँ वह खनबर के वहाँ बहुत सारे मुश्किल में इस वक्त फंसे हुए हैं अगर फौरी तौर पर इस मसले को तोज्जो देकर इसको फौरी तौर पर हल नहीं किया तो मरकजी अवमी एक्शन कमेटी इसको गिलगिट लेवल पर और पर बल्कि पूरे जी बी लेवल पर उसको कॉल देगी और इस इशू को भी हम साथ साथ दूसरे इशू के साथ हाईलाइट करेंगे इससे बेहतर ये होगा कि मैं वजी अला साहब की उस को भी कहूँगा अपने टीम से पूछ गछ करें वहाँ पर क्या मुश्किल हैं क्या मुश्किल नहीं है फौरी तौर पर अपनी टीम को बुला के वो जहाँ जहाँ जिसकी ज़रूरत है और उस काम पर फौरी तौर पर तोज्जो दे ये ना हो कि आज में खनबरी के जो आवाम है उनके यूथ है उनसे भी हमने मिले हैं वो उन्होंने भी जिक्र किया हुआ है आप ये ना समझे कि आपका ए सी डी सी वहाँ जाकर लोगों को डराएँ धमकाएँ और ये करेंगे वो करेंगे कुछ भी कोई नहीं कर सकता वाम एक्शन कमेटी के होते हुए हम आवाम के हकूक के साथ खड़े हैं इन शाला खनबरी के आवाम के साथ हम शाना बशाना खड़े हैं अगर खनबरी के आवाम के साथ उनके साथ यूथ के साथ इसी मसले में किसी ने जाति करने की कोशिश की तो पूरे गिलगित बल्चिस्तान को हम जाम कर देंगे द पुअर कंडीशन ऑफ रोड है इन गिलगित स्पेशली इन द खानबारी एरिया Leaders of the Awami Action Committee have pledged to hold a chakka jam strike across Gilgit Baltistan if the road issue in Khanbari is not addressed immediately. Ye awam shadid mushkilat ka shikar hai aur jis hisab se udhar log gandum ki boriyan apne kandhon pe utha ke le ja rahe hain usme koi banda agar gir jaye to seedha darya mein jaane ka bhi imkan hai. To us हल्के के दो मंबर हैं अफसोस का मकाम है हालांकि उनको इस चीज़ का इस चीज़ पे नोटिस लेना चाहिए और इस काम को फिल फोर कराना चाहिए वो आवाम है गिलगित बल्तिस्तान की उनको इतनी तकलीफ है अफसोस का मकाम है कि उस काम पे कोई तोजु नहीं दे रहा है लोकल रेजिडेंट्स हैव बीन प्रोटेस्टिंग अगेंस्ट वेरियस इशूज इंक्लूडिंग पुअर रोड इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एंड द एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन निगलेक्ट ऑफ दियर कंसर्न फॉर डेकेज The Stooge administration in Pakistan occupied Gilgit Baltistan has ignored public issues focusing instead on silencing reasonable voices rather than resolving the problems. In India, forts and heritage buildings are being transformed into luxury hotels blending historical grandeur with modern amenities. The trend preserves cultural heritage while offering unique opulent experiences to guests driving tourism and providing sustainable economic benefits to local communities we visited neemrana fort in rajasthan to experience this first hand have a look nestled amid the stunning aravalli hills neemrana fort palace dates back to the 15th century and was built by Prithviraj Chauhan of the Chauhan dynasty recognizing its historical and architectural significance historians and architects led by Nimrana Hotels group chairman Amarnath restored the fort in 1986 transformed into a heritage hotel Nimrana Fort Palace now invites guests to relish its captivating charm and ancient marvels revitalizing this historic site while preserving its cultural heritage I think that um, heritage is a big strength of India because when we have a civilization which is 5000 7000 years old which other countries don't have so now that we are respecting our heritage so everybody will come to see that so that is our usp or unique selling proposition and uh, luxury also has many different uh, definitions you know luxury can only be 1000 dollars and you you know do all that but nimrana is experiential luxury I mean, you have everything but you have the beauty of an experience which is unique and which you can't have elsewhere so that i think is a should be the fastest growing sector why would people come to see india's cities 
or its high-rise buildings that is very much wanted because it's development. But with heritage tourism, the good thing that's going to happen is that these heritage properties are in rural areas, in far-flung places. At Nimrana Fort Palace, guests experience Rajasthan's royal heritage with modern conveniences. Luxurious rooms like Maharaja and Maharani suites, duplex suites and heritage rooms offer grandeur and sophistication equipped with amenities like private jacuzzis, swings and royal beds. Guests can also savor authentic Rajasthani cuisine amidst the regal ambience. such a memorable experience always the architecture the rooms the names of the rooms I remember last time when I was a kid I stayed at Badal Mahal and it was a big impact on me just because the room was blue it had clouds it's just the theme is so special and you wake up and there's peacocks singing and then you go for a swim the peacocks are right there Kabutar is like a drinking the water from the pool it's just it's so different it's such a unique, special experience. I love traveling. And I especially love traveling to heritage places. Whenever I'm traveling to a new place, I always look whether there is a heritage property there or not. Because the charm of a heritage property far outweighs a new property which is there. New pro properties generally don't have any character. But heritage properties have so much character, really, as such. They, they evoke history. And I always love going to such places. Nimrana Fort Palace stands as a prime example of adaptive reuse, preserving history while offering modern luxury. In addition to its exquisite carvings, the fort contains other historic structures such as Suraj Kund, Jal Mahal and Nikumb Mahal Palace. In terms of services, we have food, lodging, spa services, recreational activities. Recreational activities में हमारे पास में camel cart है, camel ride है, vintage ride है. The preservation of ancient architecture through the adaptive reuse of historic structures showcases Rajasthan's commitment to its rich cultural heritage, providing modern comforts amidst historical splendor. Now it's time for me to wrap up today's episode. We'll be back next week at the same time. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on behalf of the entire production team of South Asia Today. Goodbye and take care.